convenient grace. It's the grace that goes before us and calls us to God. I mean, God is working in our lives even before we are aware that God is working in our lives. Think about how you came to faith in Jesus Christ and think about all the things that were in operation, so to speak, long before you even had an awareness of Christ in your life or a need for Christ. Even if you say, well, I've been a Christian my whole life and I was born and raised in the church, but think about God's work of grace, making that church available, having maybe parents or a friend or however it is you came to church. I mean, that you heard stories that, you know, in Bible Sunday school or VBS or, I mean, all the different ways that grace has worked in your life, even before you were aware of God's work, you know, in, of, of grace in your life. And that's what we call provenient grace. It's that grace that goes before us. I mean, grace is grace, so it's not like it's only it's three separate areas of grace, but that's just something that John Wesley, he didn't invent that phrase, but he made much of to call our attention to the way God is working in our lives even before we're aware of it, which I'm grateful for. And then even as we are aware of it, he's continuing to do that work. He wants us to bring us to himself. Um, and then even now that we are Christians, he's still doing that work of molding us and shaping us, and sometimes he needs to get the hammer and the chisel out. Uh, some, some parts are harder. You know, we fight harder in some areas, and so he has to do a little more sandblasting in our lives. Um, but all of it is to help us become more like Christ, to make us holy. It's the first so. lesson in forgiveness, too. Um, you know, Jesus told Peter that you forgive your neighbor 70 times 7. And this is God showing his forgiveness. There, not that there wouldn't be any discipline right. for your actions, right. but you're forgiven. Mm -hmm. And we're to do that as a, to emulate him. Yeah. That's hard. And remember, right, on the, right after the Lord's Prayer, where we are to, um, you know, forgive those who trespass against us and you know, all kind of stuff like that. What does he say at the end? Right after the Lord's prayer is over, he says, just as God forgave you, so forgive others. And it's not just after there. I mean, he says that several times. So if, you have, if, if you're having a hard time forgiving somebody, which we, maybe we've all been, not maybe, we have all been there, um, and it's not easy, but just remind yourself, I have been forgiven much, and I in turn am called to for am not called, but I am called, but I'm commanded. It's not an option, okay? It's not, God's not saying, yeah, do it if you want to. He's saying, you're required to forgive. Um, but when we're in Christ, uh, hopefully we also want to, as Philip says, we don't have to, we get to. Well, we do have to, <laughs> in this case, uh, but hopefully we will also want to. So, uh, I know we didn't get to everything, but you see how much material there is. We leapfrogged over a bunch of it. So, next time, uh, guys, um, Abraham. Now, we're going to get less conceptual and theoretical, and, you know, and we're going to get more, uh, we're going to talk about people and things like that. I realize these first two was, was heavy slogging, and it was some pretty tough terrain. I'm not saying the rest is going to be easy. I am saying that... Um, the first two are just were going to be more difficult, I think. And uh, Abraham, Abraham's going to live out everything we've just been talking about. Yeah. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, but Abraham, I mean, another key figure in the history of uh, Israel as well as uh, the Christian uh, faith. Uh, and not just the Christian faith. There's others who claim Abraham as well, which we might, we might get into. Um, so anyway, um, so next week, lesson three, and uh, thank you guys for a good conversation. Let me pray for us, and uh, we'll call it a morning. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your patience, uh, Lord, in that you have not and will not give up on any person, uh, that we all have an opportunity to repent, to turn to you, to put our... Uh, trust in you, to give our lives to you, to follow you, to live for you. And we pray to become more and more like you in our daily lives, in the way we think, in the way we speak, the things we desire, the way we act, all of that and more, Lord. We want to be conformed more and more to the likeness of your son, Jesus. And we are so grateful, Lord, especially in light of what we've talked about this morning, that uh, you didn't just do away with everything all at one time when you could have, and 
uh, but you are a God of grace and mercy and compassion and, uh, and patience. And we are thankful for all of that and more. So Lord, remind us that we need to obey you, that we need to live for you and follow your commands in this world. Remind us that we are not laws unto ourselves to do our own thing, and that just because we are uh, new, cre uh, new creatures in Christ, we're not free to do our own thing and just say we're just going to fall on grace. Uh, we still are called to, to live for you faithfully in this world, uh, but with the knowledge of the grace that has been shown us in Christ and the power of your Holy Spirit who dwells within us. So, Lord, we are grateful for this time together this morning. I pray for each person here that you would go with them into this week, watch over them, and bless them, and bring us all back next time so we can continue together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thank you.